everyone, I'm back with another video about ideal cities. I'm in Suchitoto, El Salvador, and I've come across another ideal city that is pretty much intact at the center of the city. And so I'll show you guys around a little bit here. Same kind of deal as I saw in Asuatan Mita. If you, <clears throat> I'm in the center, and there's a plaza here. I don't know if you can see, there's people just sitting around being, not doing anything. They just automatically come here because that's a, it's a place. It's a gathering place. Um, but you can see the same type of uh, outdoor stuff. You can see the archways and they are around me here as well uh, for the shop owners around the plaza. So you have the plaza in the center of it and then you see you have shops, you have a government building, you have a church, uh, commercial activities and in this particular and they're always covered uh the shops are in the center by the arcades that's what i was looking for and so you can see in this particular one here we have the arcade over here with all the shops so if it's hot out or if it's raining you can get some uh relief from the weather and then there's a nice fountain in the center here but you can decorate them anywhere you want Look behind me here. You got a sneak peek, but there's a beautiful church. Uh, pretty old church. I don't know, probably an original Spanish church. And then across from the church on the other side, so we have the church right here. And then behind me, well, where is it? It's hard to see. Uh, there's a palace. I'll try to come over here. But the thing is, we can do this in the United States, and not only can we, we should do this with developments, with subdivisions. They don't have to be this big. It just talks about the elements that you need. And you have to have a center. You need some sort of public walkable space. You need shops. You need um, <clears throat> uh, some sort of uh, reasons to come here. Churches and government are one of the largest. Plus, if you're upset at your government, you can protest them because they're right there. Uh, this is looks like it's since been changed, but that was the original intention of it. Um, but when we get into our subdivisions and stuff, and especially in new urbanism and people who think about stuff a little bit more than just the Gary Oaklands of the world, I'm calling you out, bud, because I can't, because I don't work for the government anymore, making this uh, crazy, uh, God, La La Land, Cove design, just garbage, it's just shit. Um, it's just the worst thing that people have to offer. There's absolutely no sense of care. All it is is products, but I'm not gonna talk about that. I've talked about the opportunities are just amazing. You put something like this in here, and even if you scale it down in a little new urbanist community, uh, you can, uh, you can really help activate a space and really give, really give a sense of place. And you see all the people here, you see all the commerce. This is, of course, a touristy city a little bit. Not super touristy, but um, yeah, really nice. Look at this outdoor seating here. Man, this is this is fantastic. You'd have to get permits and stuff to do this in the U.S. Um, and we know we'd have street seats, but these guys call it open. So, you know, cultural adaption if we were ever doing anything in this U.S. But the point is just to start thinking a little bit more about how we build our cities how we build our design of our built environment and how that reflects upon the way we live our lives. And we can really do something about it to get people out from behind the TV. You know, talk about reducing our screen time. I'm looking at a screen right now, but I'm out walking around. So how do you, how do you integrate those? How do you improve our qualities? How do you reduce the independence on the automobile? And a lot of it comes with placemaking. Uh, the laws of the Indies, out of the Castilian era of Spain, sort of the pinnacle of city building, uh, human rights, this is meant to reflect the human rights. And if we start taking the human element in to what we do, we're all gonna be much better off. And even if you are Gary Oakland who builds shit in Billings, Montana, uh, you, you can have a, a price premium for your product. So it's, it's good for the triple bottom line, sustainability, people, places, and, and the bottom line. So 
do if you're interested and you like this video uh, check out my other video on Oswaton Mita if you haven't seen it another example of a city and um, check out the laws of the Indies thanks for watching and uh, keep checking out that environment the built environment the cities um, analyze it love to hear your comments on some great places you've seen and what you liked about them so thanks for watching